You've married your farmer, you've moved to the land, and you've both been doing massive days. It's time for a holiday. Have you ever wondered who you could get to step in while you're away? What are the processes and what's involved in having someone come in on a temporary contract to help manage your business and look after your animals and crops while you're away? These are questions we answer in today's interview with Footloose Farm Care with Helena and Lockie. So let's jump in to today's episode. Hi and welcome to the farm. I'm Katja Williams, the rural mum, and today I'm here with Lockie and Alina. Guys, can you introduce your business and tell us a little bit about it? Thank you so much for having us on your wonderful podcast. Um, we're Helena and Lockie and we are the owners of Footloose Farm Care. So basically we offer short-term contracting for farmers who need to get away and have a bit of a break um, or offer extra assistance on the farm as well. That's pretty well um, who we are anyway, I guess. So what inspired you to start this venture and focus on the relief work and the short-term contracting for farmers? So a few months ago, Locke and I were actually supposed to go overseas to visit Locke's sister. And back when we were at full-time, Locke was the full-time assistant manager on a station, um, we found it really hard to find someone capable enough to take over his role. So uh, we both resigned from our full-time <laughs> jobs a week apart and pretty well dove in straight away and thought, well, there's nothing really quite out there. Um, and especially for people who are qualified and can take over the farm or, or help um, in various different roles. So we thought, well, let's start our own business um, and see where it goes. And it's take it off pretty, pretty bloody quickly. Um, some examples are our very first job we had within like 24 hours since we launched our business. And that one was through our network. But since then, um, people have just been talking, social media as well. I guess we kind of talk a bit about mental health um, as well now in this new age, this new era, and farming is no, no it's no different, and it's it's quite big out there. And a lot of the a lot of the problems that we hear is, you know, the husband can't leave the farm or doesn't want to leave the farm, um, a because there's no one capable to take over or there's no room to have a full time employee. So that's where we kind of started our business and thought, well, we are capable. Our business is built on a lot of trust and building relationships and, and connection. Um, so that's pretty where Footloose started. started. Locke actually thought of the name Footloose. So the song Footloose is quite popular in our car rides around the paddock. <laughs> um, and I guess farm care because... We want it to be different from just your general contractors. Farm care providing or a little bit more than caretaking. Um, we can actually muster and do your weaning and weaning. Other general infrastructure projects and maintenance and that way we can, we're still trying to actually, we're pushing people to go and take the time for themselves because we've been there as well. Uh, just provides yourself with a lot more motivation instead of it being burnt out all the time knowing there's someone that actually, come, actually coming in to take over your role so you can have a break really lets you motivate yourself and we all need a break. Yeah, um, that's that's very important, especially, you know, when you talk about mental health and we're by no means practitioners or anything like that, but I think with mental health it's just really important to just stop um, for a minute, especially since, you know, that C word and, and how the word the world has changed, um, and farming's hard. 
it's long days, it's hot days, it's physical work, but we love it. That's the difference. You you know, um, I've come from a corporate background previously and I would not trade this at all ever in my entire life. Yeah, I guess we we kind of cover a bit of that mental awareness to say, hey, if you need to slow down, give us a call. We'll come, you know, even if it's a minimum of a week or two, um, depending where you are, and we'll take over and let you go have a bit of a break and recharge. Yeah, absolutely. And you'd say, you know, we've sort of covered a little bit about the challenges and the solutions um, that the farmers face that you can solve with that as well. So tell me a little bit about some of the problems that may arise when you get on farm or you get on station um, and you st go to start a job. Some things that need to be thought of by our farmers beforehand, before you turn up so they can go away? What are the things they need in place before you turn up and, and start helping you out? I think uh, being organised, having a plan and whether you're prior to going away, organising that when you have people come and give you uh, relief, that there is things that they can achieve, the tasks that are laid out, and that way you're more confident in letting yourself have that break. I think is probably the main thing um, and then that way it's just more efficient for the transition between going away and coming back because that way everyone's on the same page and really the efficiency drives success so everyone's trying to be more successful and becoming more efficient and why can't we bring that to your business as well and help you with that. I think being open-minded as well um, is kind of that new age word that we kind of all talk about at the moment being authentic being open-minded um to pass the ropes on just for a little while um we're also really keen to see different operations no one operates a farm exactly the same way there is no how-to book there is no manual that comes with farming so i guess that's why we're a little bit unique in the sense that we can come and learn from you and, and learn as well like we we're not perfect we've still got things we're all learning on the job so that that's the biggest um, plus for us as well so that when every every place we go to we're bringing more skills and we're learning more skills both to bring to people's operations and ourselves so yeah and i come from a hr background so I also offer admin support, which is the one thing that gets left behind, isn't it? Admin. It's that scary word. Um, admin, HR. Um, so I can definitely help with um, even policies and procedures, implementing um, a system that um, is data driven as well so that you can literally hand over, um, you know, the same as if you're weighing cattle. You just plug in your data and if you're away, you still get to see what's happening. They've lost weight, put on weight. You you're still you might be absent then and there, but the data's captured so that you can come back to it when you get back. So I can also help implement um, those sorts of systems. I can assist with uh, hiring, firing, hopefully not, um, but all those sorts of things, um, social media support as well. So there's quite a fair bit that Locke and I have, um, especially in our experience um, over the last few years. So there's nothing really we can't do. I think the goal is to one day hire a couple of different other couples who are like-minded, um, just the same as we are and have, you know, someone in every state so that we can be, be broader across Australia and help more, help more farmers. Yeah, absolutely. So what do you say some of the common misconceptions of relief workers would be? Are there questions that have come to you with your jobs that you've had to debunk or um, that you've had to sort of overcome for someone to say, yep, okay, I'll accept your help? Yeah, for sure. I guess the biggest one is caretaking. So we are a little bit more than your average caretaker. So there's plenty of people travelling around the country nowadays that's happy to step in and feed the dogs or the chooks um, in exchange for like power and water. 
Locke and I are pretty skilled. Locke's definitely more skilled than I am, but I'm getting there. Um, and we're really there to assist you with projects that you might not have started. For example, our last job um, was with the fences. So we actually built two pens. Two electric fence, fence pens so that we can actually feed more cattle during the drought. And uh, yeah, we really love that. We just drew on our own skills and grew more and learnt more and we're actually getting jobs done for people they were hoping to get done but they're too busy to do them themselves because yeah some people run very busy operations so if there's things that are just getting left on the side we can pick those up as well yeah so yeah that's one of the projects that we kind of took over and even if it is in a quiet time that's the perfect time where you can get those fences redone or paddock management, all those sorts of things as well. Get your admin in order. Um, and that's a really good time that you can also step back um, and hand over the reins as well. Or in your busier times where you're doing you're weaning, weaning you're, carving. There's plenty of people that just have very structured blocks and that's great. And we would love to be involved with those as well. Yeah, so that's probably one of the things um, because we do charge a rate. Um, unfortunately, the dogs and horses don't feed themselves, so um, they do travel with us. So we actually have six working, oh, soon to be seven or eight working dogs again, um, two horses and two toy poodles as well. So they are our entourage that travel with us to every job, no matter where we go. Um, and we're pretty self-sufficient as well. So most of the time we've got everything ready to go but sometimes we do need help with power and water and those sorts of things so I guess the caretaking was probably our our biggest one um, we've also just done a information booklet and that I guess explains who we are why we do what we do it has a resume in there of both individual res resumes and combined um, our rates and how you can get in touch with us as well. Perfect, that booklet. So they just need to send an email either to footloosefarmcare at gmail.com requesting the booklet or uh, social media, they can flick us a DM as well. We always like to chat to our couples or families um, over the phone and always like to meet with them as well just to get a bit of a plan in place so that we know what we've got to do when we turn up. Um, and so that they can get the most out of it as well. <laughs> Are there specific tips, tricks you would recommend to farmers to be able to make their operation more flexible for you to be able to jump in and help? Yeah, I guess being having a, a rough plan. I know things come up all the time that change that, you know, weather, unforeseeable things. But if, if there is a, a general plan throughout the year and you can start blocking time off to have for yourself and then allocate some tasks for people who are giving you the relief that generally makes it pretty easy for people to step out. And perhaps there are tasks or projects that you don't have the time for or they've been on the list for more than six to 12 months. They're generally the things, um, depending on what how you prioritise them, on how we come in and, and can assist with those sorts of things as well. But we're also happy to assist in the planning. So if you are a farmer um, and you're overwhelmed with how much stuff there is to do. Today, for instance, we had to change our, our plan three times already and it wasn't even lunchtime. So we get that things change drastically. But I guess have a, if there is a project in mind that you do want us to do, we can certainly plan that out prior to us even arriving. We can talk about materials, how you want it laid out. Um, but I'm also also very passionate about the admin sides of things as well. So plenty of systems, um, and I'm happy to give them away. Send me a message if you're interested. Plenty of systems. We all carry our mobile phone with us um, that you can just jot down and go, oh, fence nine in paddock three needs a new strainer or needs new fixing or whatever. Make a note of it and then come back in a week's time and go, holy cow, I've actually got a lot to do. How do I prioritise that? Yeah, absolutely. So in your opinion, how would you say 
your business is impacting the industry? Yeah, that's a big question. And I think, <laughs> I think what can I, uh, I know I, I'm the majority talker here, and that comes from my announcing and celebrancy background. But um, I think we weren't prepared for how much our business has impacted both couples and families. And how much demand there was yeah. so quickly. Yeah, it was, it was pretty quick. We kind of weren't prepared for that. So we've still got a, a lot of things to purchase and buy and, and get fully set up on the road. But it just goes to show that this service is required. And I think, you know, it's one of our big business goals that if we can find other couples alike um, who are on the same page as us and, and share the same value, we'd love to spread them around the country. So we're kind of a bit of a unique business. There was, there's not really anything compared to us out there at the moment. And I guess that's what's special about us. And, and we're pretty special people. <laughs> we get along very well. We work together very well and we have a lot of fun. Difference too. You, sometimes it's hard working with a spouse um, or a partner, but Locke and I, of course we have our moments. We had one just before <laughs> yep. while we were mustering, um, but we communicate really well and that's that's one of our values as well is communication, building relationships. Our clients become friends, really. We we step into people's lives. Um, so we value connection pretty highly. We weren't quite re prepared for how busy we would be. 2024 is already booking up pretty well quickly. So, yeah, we just want to help as many people as, as possible. And we found that it's pretty widespread. I mean, we've had con contact with someone from Tennant Creek running, looking at our services and then all down to Victoria. So... We've only just started and we're working through Queensland and into New South Wales and I think, yeah, it's, there is obviously a high demand for it and we're, we're lucky to have uh, become a part of that. So Yeah, and I think it's pretty wholesome for us. We, we don't take it lightly um, coming into people's operations and, and their, their livelihood. We've had um, quite an array of people contact us from all stations all over Australia out We've had someone contact us from Tennant Creek. Yeah, Victoria, we had contact with someone. And, and we've had a few jobs we've had to pass up already, just timing didn't work out and we were already on jobs. And, and look, our values, we're going to finish a job before we move on. We're not just going to jump here and there because we are compassionate people and this is why we started this, because we know what people need and we're happy to be there. When you pull up at someone's property, what is your usual, um, like the way that you sort of go about unpacking and setting you up and setting your horses up? You know, what do your horses and dogs need when they get here? And and you've mentioned, you know, sometimes you need some water and some power, but is there anything else that, you know, you and your entourage need? Um, we're quite a unique entourage, that's for sure, when we pass through different towns. Um, so at the moment, we currently travel with two vehicles. Um which is proving a little bit difficult at the moment. We are looking to upgrade to a truck. So if anyone from Hino or Ampol is listening, um, we'd love some sponsorship, <laughs> um, especially fuel at the moment. Yeah. But our our main goal, hopefully by the end of the year, is to actually have a truck that houses the horses, houses the dogs um, and all our bits. We mainly just need power and water if we if we have access um, just to keep us going. But we don't re need a lot of room. Um, we're pretty self-sufficient. Yeah. Our dogs are quiet. They're super friendly working dogs. We don't believe in hard uh, biting dogs. We do have a couple that if we need backup, they'll certainly jump in. But um, they're pretty family friendly as well. And I think that's important for who we are. Um, the two poodles have live a life of luxury in the caravan. Yeah, um, there's no work for them. <laughs> there's no work for them, just cuddle time. Um, and, again, our two horses, they're happy just to roam um, any paddock that's spare. Beautiful. Are there any specific lessons or insights you'd, you've gained that you would share to 
um, farmers about the opportunity of this and how it can benefit, you know, them and their business outside the mental health range, but actually like business and logistics? Some farmers get a bit overwhelmed and become too pretty well stuck in their business doing the day-to-day things. They don't actually get time to step back and look at their marketing and make the the dynamic decisions they need to, to actually, whether it's to go and chase up sales or do research for any um, grants that are available. If we can, we can take that day-to-day stuff off your hands for a short period of time and you can focus on growing your business however you need to. um, That I'd like to mention is, Our last job we stepped in because the guy had been hit up by a bull unexpectedly and we basically rushed back from holidays to get started pretty quickly and to jump in and help feeding because they're in drought. We're not in drought anymore. We're pretty drenched Mm -hmm. out here at the moment. So we stepped in and took care of all the feeding. Um, And we're just doing the other projects that that are required. Um, some cattle work but one thing he really wanted to look into was the nutrition but he didn't have time to really research um, about you know general nutrition for cattle um, because they're a stud operation and one day he actually came up to us and he said you guys have actually saved me like seventy thousand dollars from buying something that I didn't need Um, I was actually able to go do my research and talk to people and even that day he had sold two bulls or from memory as well because he had the time to actually connect with those potential clients that he had already met um, and follow up on uh, new leads as well. So he was able to generate income just from us taking over the day-to-day operations. They have a beautiful website that they're you know getting on now and their branding and marketing is really on point now as well and i think that's that's our aim our aim is for you guys to step back into your business um and we'll take care of the general day-to-day we're happy to be out in the sun for most of the day we're getting on a bit now but um for most of the day and i guess take that stress away from you because people don't realise even feeding takes five hours, you know, for us, depending how many cattle that you are feeding or or those sorts of things, moving, shifting cows from one paddock to another, like our half an hour job turned into nearly two hour job. So that's probably one of the things that we actually were able to step back and go, wow, like he made money and saved money all in one day at the same time and he's been able to well they've been able to go away and look at new lease blocks new, look at um you know potential clients and and actually step back into their business on on generating the income yeah absolutely and i had one last question which is one that was actually raised um by one of the rural Mon community and that is with the biosecurity of moving from one farm to another what are the practices that you have in place to make sure that we're able to keep those nice and clear lines in in what we are and aren't bringing on to somebody else's property yeah so that obviously is um done by state government as well what um, security measures that we should have in place. Our our team, our, our horses, our dogs, us, we're all up to date with our vaccines and, you know, all those sorts of things. Um, we're pretty strict with where we've been and what we're coming into to make sure that we don't cross over and um, especially if we have been in like a feedlot operation like we have been recently to make sure that all our equipment is hunky-dory clean that we're not going to cross over so um, we're also insured ourselves we have our own insurance our own ABN so um, that all protects us and protects our next family as well great question thank you so that comes to the end of my official questions for today was there anything else that you wanted to tell us about your business and how people can go about um inquiring booking with you and having you help them out on their farm look we love to have a yarn we always like to meet um, potential clients over the phone or via video chat however you like to do it 
um, get in contact with us via a message, whether you see us on Facebook or Instagram, um, our phone numbers, email. We always like to have a bit of a chat and work out whether we can assist you um, and dates available. As I said, we love to plan as well with you so we can help you prioritise and um, see how we can best assist. Just give us a ring if you have more questions about what we can offer and our skills. We're, we're pretty honest and if we say we can't do something, if we can't do it well, we're still keen to learn as well, which we have done along the way. But, um, yeah, no, we, we'd love to help as many people as we can in 2024. Yeah, beautiful. For coming on the podcast today, I'm sure there are many farmers and farmers' wives out there listening to the podcast today and those who have moved to the farm for the first time and they've come away with some good insight in how they can improve their operation to make sure they can step out of their business, to take that holiday, to take that break or how they can use a contracting business such as yourself to improve their management and improve their farming operations. So thank you so much, guys, for coming on.